Afternoon folks. It's been a little while since we put out a video. It's not for want of trying because uh, I've been filming a lot and that's one of the problems you see. Um, the problem, the, the project that I've been working on has been to clad and insulate our caravan. I mean, it's the, I think it's, what is it today? 16th, 15th, 16th of April, something like that. And it's a glorious day, it's really warm but it's still freezing every night. The last last four or five days, we've had a couple of minus fives, minus six, and minus three has been the the warmest overnight we've had. So it's been, uh, we've lost a few seedlings in the polytunnel, but yeah, in all, it's been pretty good, really. Um, so even though it's warm, it's still really cold at night, and we don't really want to go through another winter in the caravan, um, struggling to keep the heat in like we have this year. We can get it warm, just can't keep it warm so I've been working on the caravan um, for a, uh, a few weeks now not solid just here and there when I've got a bit of time and I'm really pleased with what's happening so far uh, I've filmed loads of it and I started putting the video together but there's so much footage of it I thought you know what I'm just gonna end up boring everyone I don't really don't want to do that to you so oh, I was boring myself so so I thought rather than do that, what I'll do is I'll just walk around the caravan now and show you what we've done and how I've done it. And I'll just intersperse a few bits and pieces of the, uh, of the footage I have taken. Not a great deal, but just so you can see what it is that we've done. So I'll turn you around. Now, some of you will remember what the caravan did look like, but this is where we're at. This is the stage we're at now. There's a lot of, lot of timber laying around, but you get the idea. So basically, I've built a framework all around the caravan in three by two timbers. And, and I've also put a roof on it. Because obviously a lot of the heat will just be going up out of the roof, not just the walls and the floor. A lot of it goes out the roof. So we've uh, put a roof on, we're gonna insulate, well, we have insulated that actually. And uh, I also built this extended part, which will be uh, sort of a veranda, really. So there'll be decking all through here. We've even got the, uh, the rocking chair ready to go. Um, and so that frame goes all the way around. Now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest this is a cheap option. This isn't, um, um, this isn't something to do if you're just going to be in your caravan for one winter. But if if like us, it looks like you're going to be in, in your van for maybe two or three, maybe even four winters, then this is worth doing, I think. So the first problem I had to overcome in doing it was to find a way of fixing everything. I didn't want to fix to the caravan because the walls are so thin. They're just, um, there's a metal sheet on the outside. Then there's about an inch batten with polystyrene insulation and then like a vinyl board on the inside. So these walls are literally not much more than an inch, inch and a half thick. So there's not a lot to fix to. And I didn't want to be governed by the spacing of the other, of the battens that were in there. So what I noticed underneath is every four foot or so, there's one of these, uh, if you can see it, one of these steel girders, this is here. <laughs> which which goes right the way across the caravan this this steel here so what I did was I just drilled some holes in that steel you can see you can see there's one there if I can get the camera to stay still and one there why is it doing that anyway there's holes and screws and what I did was I've screwed a timber, this timber, to the steel, and that sits out four inches from the edge of the caravan. That's the edge of the caravan, that's four inches. So then I've put a four inch timber on top of that, all the way along. And it's sitting on one of these timbers that are screwed to the girders, about every four foot. The corners are slightly different because there's no girder in the corner, but I'll show you that in a second. And on top of that, off the top of that, I've built a 3x2 studwork. 
The reason it's three by two on top of a four by two plate is because at the top, you can see just here, that's a little gutter which sticks out from the wall of the caravan about an inch. So to use three by two, I had to come off, off the caravan an inch. And that's why we've got a four inch plate and a three inch stud. Then around the windows, I've set these back from the window, the edge of the window there, about three quarters of an inch. And that's gonna be the thickness of some cladding that will go. I'm gonna put cladding in, that, in there to frame the window all the way around. And there'll be like a piece of cladding on the bottom, like a sill. It will sit there and the water will run off that. That's why all those are angled down. All the windows are like that. And this is all, I'm very fortunate, this is all timber that I've milled at um, Otter Ferry. My mate Jock has got a sawmill and I've been working over there on a Monday helping him fell trees and clad agricultural buildings that he's putting up um, in return for, for timber. So I've got a, a free source of timber at the moment, which is just fantastic. And same on the end. At this end, fortunately, there was a, there's a girder that runs that way, which I was able to put a, uh, in this instance, a three inch timber underneath to pick up this other plate. Now there's no girder going across at the end. So what I've done, I've stood a post on a couple of block pavers. Don't want the post in contact with the ground because it will just suck the water up and rot away. So I sat the post on the block pavers and I've just mort cut a, a mortise or it's a slot really into the post both in both directions and then there's a 4 by 2 goes off that way and then the 4 by 2 goes off this way again fixed to timbers that are attached to the girders underneath the caravan now all caravans will have those girders so this is a I think it's a really good way of doing it but on the front obviously I've not just stopped at 4 inches I've come out to another post Again, sat on block pavers and with a four by two right the way through. It goes goes into the caravan about two foot and right out there. And I've done that on the first girder past this door. And I've done it all the way along on all the girders in between to the first girder past this door. Which means that we can deck this area. And then these steps here which I made out of railway sleepers when we first got here. They used to be the other way around, going up the, up to the doors. They'll, they're just temporarily in there. They'll come round and they'll be put on this end. So you'll walk up this way onto the deck. Same at the other end, we'll have a set of steps that'll come up onto the deck that way. And, uh, and that'll be a lovely covered area. And uh, we actually laid some six by twos on the deck yesterday, just to get a feel for what it would be like. And we put our we put our rocking chair on there, just to uh, just to get a feel for it. And uh, while I was sitting there, I thought, wouldn't it be nice if on these central in this central area, I'm going to extend the deck out. I won't I won't put a cover on it. I won't roof it. I'll just just bring a deck out. And I'm going to build a a stone circular fire pit and then build a deck around it so we can we can sit out there and uh, and have a fire going and enjoy the evenings so that'd be a nice thing that's uh, something that you know it's one of those ideas that just came along spontaneously um uh, i think we'll definitely do that as time goes by so on the roof I haven't finished this end. It's the only end I haven't finished stud work wise or uh, framing wise if you're in Canada or America. That's uh, a little nod to Naomi if she's, if she's watching this video. Uh, we call it stud work, you call it framing. And interestingly, to me, these timbers here are noggins known the world over as noggins as far as I knew till I came to Scotland. Apparently they're called dwangs here. Have you ever heard such a thing? 
dwangs. I'm, I'm still not certain that I'm not being wound up, but apparently, apparently they're called dwangs. Anyway, I haven't finished this end of the of the caravan yet because this, there's lots to think about on this end, and I figure by the time I get to it, I'll have worked out how to do it because there's lots of bits that stick out. The window, that window is like a bay, and up up the top there. Uh, the, the sheeting's out here, but down below it's sitting right back in here, so I'll worry about that when I get to it. But you can see the timbers up there. I um, I did shoot a little bit of video of me cutting the rafters just to explain how that was done. And you'll see that there's another timber in there. It's only a, it's about a two by two, it's all I had room for. That's, uh, that's acting as a what's called a collar which stop, when the weight goes down on the roof, it's, it's attached to the rafter at, at this end and this end, and it stops it spreading that way when there's any weight put on the top. That stops the roof spreading out. So, so these roof, roof timbers, obviously on this side, are all that length. On this side, there's a few at that length, and then the next ones along there are extended out an extra it's about a meter and a half wide that so they're an extra they're an extra bit long to take that up and then I'll quickly show you where we're at on the roof I've got um, I've got footage of the roof going down and being made and some of the trickier parts of the roof were were actually um, figuring out how to extend the flue for the boiler which is that one there and also the the flue for the wood burner which is there wood burner wasn't so much of an issue but the but the boiler flue and this here which is the extractor that was a bit more of an issue and then we've got we've got a, uh, a vent here She's got a cover going on it. I had to extend that up. That's for the kitchen. And the other one there that's boarded over is uh, for the shower room. So I've started to felt this. This is done with torch on roofing felt. So that's uh, that's already got bitumus on the on the felt, and you heat it up with a, a roofing torch, big blow torch, which is actually laying over there at the moment. Uh, and roll it out, and that sticks to the sticks to the uh, board underneath. So there'll be a layer of underlay, which is this black stuff, and then there'll be a a layer of mineral top felt, which is which is like that one there. These are just scraps I had left over from when we came up, just left over from a job I must have done down south. I'm expecting delivery of the other felt for this roof tomorrow, so then I'll be able to get on. And once once this roof is uh, watertight, then uh, then it will be time to start concentrating on the on cladding and insulating the all the walls. So underneath these boards, this is the rafters were four by twos. It's not a very big roof. It's only two point one. The rafters on this side only two point one meters. So four by two, nobody's going to be coming up here jumping around, so four by two is plenty. And uh, four by two rafters, collars are just off cuts because some of the some of the timbers that I had were six by two, and I ripped them down to four by two, which left me with two by two. So I used them as collars. And uh, this is 18 mil OSB sterling board, um, and you can see it's all stuffed with uh, sheep's wool in there, which uh, there is a plentiful supply of in the Glen. I, um, I bought nine huge bags of it from one of the local farmers, and um, there's plenty more where that came from. Um, so that's, uh, that's kind of where we're at at the moment. With it. Really, really pleased. I think it's going to be a really nice, really nice feature. I'm currently just putting these these six by twos all the way round. Um, 
I started over on that corner, I've come around the front and I've put a drip on. See, there's a two by one nailed to there. That's a drip so that when I bring the felt over and down, that'll drip into a gutter. Um, I'll do the same on, on this here. But up here, I'm just gonna bring the flashings over and, and flat onto that. Effectively, what's a fascia board really. It's all rough timber, but that's fine. So, that's where we're at. Hopefully there's been a bit of detail in the in the video without making it too long for you and this is this is some of the cladding which we're going to be using this is, there you go it's down there now <laughs> it's larch larch boards not about yeah, it's averaging about 19 mil thick like that and it's still got the bark on so it's going to look really nice that's all come from Jock's place over at Otter Ferry as well. So that's going to be put horizontally along the walls. Again, the walls are going to be filled with uh, sheep's wool, and then it'll have a layer of breathable membrane, like it, which is like a very strong, very thin felt. That'll hold all the insulation in, and then we'll and then we'll cover it with cladding. And once all the framing is around the windows to so that the cladding's got something to go up against up against on around the windows it should look really smart i think so that's where we're at on our transformation of our car caravan to well it looks something like a cross between a cricket pavilion and a log cabin i guess <laughs> it's a nice day to be doing it I hope that's of interest. If you've got any questions about the construction or any of the materials used or how I did any bits of it, do please just drop a comment in the in the boxes below or wherever they are and uh, I will definitely answer you. So, hopefully that's given you a little bit of something to think about if you're planning to live in a caravan at any point in the future. So, Goodbye from Ladyfield Farm on this glorious spring day.